discussing about solutions for gate 2008 ECE paper and the topic we are discussing is electron devices this is fourth one more question came in electron devices in gate 2008 a silicon wafer has 100 nanometers of oxide on it and is inserted in a furnace at a temperature above 1000 degree centigrade for further oxidation in dry oxygen the oxidation rate a is independent of current oxide thickness and temperature b is independent of current oxide thickness but depends on temperature c slows down as the oxide grows d is zero as the existing oxide prevents further oxidation so we should understand that when generally oxidation is used to perform to create SiO2 layer on silicon already the silicon wafer has oxide layer of 100 nanometers on it and it is exposed for further oxidation using dry oxygen and the temperature is 1000 degree centigrade above this value then the correct answer for this one the oxidation growth rate is independent of current oxide thickness and temperature for this is true only for dry oxidation for wet oxidation the answer is slows down as the oxide grows C since the question is asked for the dry oxidation dry oxygen process so the answer is A is independent of current oxide thickness and temperature we will see the details dry oxidation is used to produce silicon dioxide layer on silicon for dry oxidation the process is silicon plus oxygen gives rise to silicon dioxide and dry oxidation is performed usually at a temperature range of 900 to 1200 degree centigrade initially This initial silicon dioxide layer on silicon is formed by the reaction of surface silicon atoms with oxygen. So look at this one. This is the initial process. We are going with silicon and this is the material and oxygen is going to be exposed on this one diffused so that these oxygen atoms are going to be mm, reacting with silicon at this near the surface. So near the surface now what you are getting is nothing but silicon atoms and just above the surface oxygen atoms. So initial silicon dioxide layer is going to be formed on silicon by the reaction of surface silicon atoms by the reaction of surface silicon atoms with oxygen. After this one a silicon dioxide layer is going to be gets formed gets formed. So the starting of silicon dioxide layer is now get started. Once a silicon dioxide layer is formed, further oxidation occurs at the silicon silicon dioxide interface. Look at this one. Now O2 is going to be exposing to silicon dioxide, then after that one silicon is there. So first this O2 atoms are going to be exposed to silicon dioxide layer later they have to diffuse into the silicon dioxide layer then entering into the silicon so that the O2 atoms are reacting with silicon to form further silicon dioxide so once a silicon dioxide layer is formed further oxidation occurs at silicon silicon dioxide interface that is further oxidation occurs over this place silicon silicon dioxide interface is nothing but this line so over this place further oxidation place because oxygen atoms are going to be diffusing and they are going to be re interacting with silicon atoms over this place that is silicon silicon dioxide interface such that oxidizing agents diffuse through the oxide to react with silicon atoms at the interface for thin oxide thin oxide is also called as gate oxide which is used to form the mass capacitor it is going to be just below the polysilicon for the mass capacitor action so for thin oxide thin oxide and gate oxide these are both are same and they formed using dry oxidation technique for thin oxide layer the oxidizing elements 
can easily diffuse through the initial oxide and the oxide growth is limited by the reaction rate at silicon silicon dioxide interface so here the oxidizing elements O2 oxygen atoms can easily diffuse through the initial oxide so initial oxide is not going to prevent the oxidation element oxidizing elements to interact at mm, silicon silicon dioxide interface so for dry oxidation oxidation rate is independent of current oxide thickness and temperature but the oxidation growth rate varies linearly with time how much time the oxidation is going to be performed that is going to be related to the oxidation growth rate so for dry oxidation oxidation rate is independent of current oxide thickness and temperature in case of thicker oxides thicker oxide is also called as field oxide field oxide is normally used to isolate the nearby transistors to isolate the nearby conductors nearby metal lines so for isolation purpose thick oxide that is field oxides are used and field oxides are grown using wet oxidation technique so for wet oxidation technique that is in case of thicker oxide the oxidation reaction is limited by the diffusion of oxidizing elements through the prevent previously formed oxide so in case of thicker oxides the oxidation reaction is limited by the diffusion of the oxidizing elements through the previously formed oxide so previously formed oxide is now preventing the mm, oxidizing elements to diffuse towards SiSiO2 layer so for wet oxidation the oxidation rate slows down as the oxide grows but in our case the question is asking about the dry oxidation so that for dry oxidation the oxidation growth rate is independent of current oxide thickness and temperature